The way some of y'all want to be trad wives is interesting. I'm fascinated by your choices, but I also kind of get it because who do I make fun of the most is the cottagecore girls because I used to be such a cottagecore girl. When I was like, look at us trying to run away from our responsibilities. Look at us trying to like pretend we're all going to have farms and like live off the land with, as if that shit isn't hard as fuck. My fiance wants to become a trad wife after a wedding and I am tempted to call off the wedding as a result. Should I call off the wedding? I'm a 29 male and my fiance is 27. Uh, I'll say her name's Kate. I've been with Kate for four years, engaged for one, due to get married in July, and I do love Kate and can't wait to spend the rest of my life with her, but lately she's been becoming serious about becoming a trap wife after getting married, and I'm having a hard time getting on board. I was then very surprised and asked her what made her suddenly desire to just stay at home and work. <clears throat> to my shock, she said, TikTok of all things. So what this really comes down to is I think a lot of people are just running away from the fact that they're insecure about their future and they're just latching onto things that they see on social media. I I'm sorry, I'm, I'm calling the ladies out on this one, the amount of times women have told me, I want to farm. <laughs> In our defense, when we imagine having that farm, it's very cute. Okay, very Pride and Prejudice. In my defense, every time I thought about having that farm, it was a fantasy. And then my brother had a little farm. And I watched how hard it was for him and his wife to do it. And they had to wake up every day at like the crack of dawn to milk the cow. And I was like, um... I kind of like to sleep in though, so. Oh, my mom has had a garden my whole life. So I was like, okay, my grandpa had a winery. Okay, my other grandpa had a winery slash fruit trees and two acres. And I was like, okay, I could do this. It's in my genetics, okay? Did I, please, ma'am? Ma'am, it's a dream, but it also is a dream of running away. It is a dream of running away. It's a dream of saying, I wish I had less responsibility because it feels like this would be less responsibility. But the irony is it's so much responsibility. I want a farm. I want a farm so I could get our own milk and then get our own cheese. <laughs> Abba didn't even know me during this era and he's... <laughs> and grow our own crops. And I'm like, bitch, all your plants are dead. <gasps> I am overwhelmed with the idea of buying a plant that I dried out flowers so I could have dead flowers in the house because I am exhausted at the idea of caring for a single plant. He's right. He's right. You learn it the hard way. You really have this dream in your head that I'm going to have this. And even my farm brother learned that some of the things him and his wife even dreamed about having were too much work, too much work with all the kids and everything else and the costs. I can't remember exactly how much he was spending, but just to run the farm was thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a month just to run the farm. Because you think in your head, oh, I'm going to live a simple life. I'm going to get a van and re like upholster it or I'm going to build a little co cottage and like collect rainwater. I'm going to have less responsibility. Girl, you're going to have more. But you don't think about it that way because you're like, I'll simplify, I'll simplify, I'll simplify. Simple living is complicated living. Convenient living is expensive and complicated living. They're all expensive. It's all complicated. Low maintenance. You need to be the person to get to low maintenance in the first place. You got to have enough money to be low maintenance. Brian says, dang it, Brittany, I want a horse and that's a lot of responsibility. Bro, just the house, the horse. Maddox says it's like making clothes from scratch. So my grandma was a seamstress and she taught me how to sew and I can't sew very good at all. But I kind of could sew a couple things and I would sort of like want to sew my own clothes. And then you just realize like the time, the money, the effort. Oh my gosh. No, ma'am. The best I can do is make bread from scratch. That takes two seconds and it's very cheap. I can do that. Now, it is more expensive technically than buying a loaf of bread for a dollar. But at the same time, I do prefer the bread I make at home. And I can do that easy. That's the one thing I can do. Cookies and bread. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. We're a minute into this video and Abba's already roasting. For the record, okay, it's a good dream. It's just a very expensive, time consuming. It's just like the same dream men have about being like lumberjacks in a forest. It's like, bro, that's a lot of work, bro. You can't keep a f***ing fern alive. Hey, you want to do what? <laughs> People see these things through the lens of social media and they're convinced that this is the life that they want. Yeah. You're not getting a farm and all those animals are going to be better off because they don't have you. Mean. Okay, do you guys know this girl? I see her on my TikTok and I skip all her videos. Peace and love. I don't like high... This is high luxury. This is like, you got money, money. This morning I asked my toddlers what they wanted for breakfast and they both said cereal. So cereal it was and we got started right away. I made two types of cereal. The first one was chocolate chip cookies. Man, so your children woke up, asked you wanted, what they wanted for breakfast and then they sat around for hours waiting for you to make it or did you ask them the night before? Question mark. 
cereal so i mix some flour peanut sydney says she's mormon oh i didn't know she was real i didn't know she i don't think i realized that she was religious that makes sense though butter maple syrup milk and chocolate and formed that into a dough then i rolled tiny little balls and flattened them out to resemble put those in the oven as well for about 10 minutes once those were done i let those cool have you ever asked yourself why it is that trad wives and other conservative female influencers who promote Traditional gender roles have all the time in the world to make cereal from scratch. But okay, this is a really cool video, but before we get into that, so there's the trad wives who make the videos, and then there's the cottage core girls who make their videos, and they're kind of the same. There's that cottage core girl that got really, really famous, fairy, fairy cottage or whatever. And I remember her saying in a video something to the effect of the videos are are like very aesthetically purposeful and are different than what's really happening. Like even in my videos at, at the BTS, like behind the scenes videos I do for YouTube, I try to be very like honest about how they end up happening. But sometimes I can wake up and make bread in under 15 minutes and have it rising in the oven for 30. And I don't like have time to set up a camera and do a whole thing. I just like do it so fast. I don't even think. There's nothing aesthetic about it. It's loud and it's messy and I get it done and it's boop. All these people who curate content around aesthetic all eventually say like, yeah, the aesthetic is on purpose. It doesn't reflect like the reality of what life looks like. Life doesn't look like a YouTube video, guys. It might feel like that when you're living your life. I feel like that when I'm zenning out in my like house and I'm looking at the ocean or the sea view and I'm making bread, it feels like a YouTube video in terms of aesthetic, like that really peaceful, calming feeling. But if you were filming me, it doesn't look like that. So I feel like YouTube videos, when they're aesthetic YouTube videos, are trying to recreate that feeling you want to have when you're living that life. But real life doesn't look like that. Does that make, does that kind of make sense? But somehow never seem to record themselves doing essential domestic labor, like vacuuming, trying to get a particularly nasty stain out of a shirt or scrubbing a toilet. Okay. You aren't aware of this. Yeah, I want to see a video of her in her lingerie scrubbing a toilet. This is a huge fad right now. It's basically these women who call themselves trad wives and they're like, I'm going to make bread from scratch and I'm going to quilt a skirt from my two year old or whatever. They're, they're constantly doing stuff like this. And this video genre is incredibly popular. So he's talking about this. Let's watch. It's always something that, strictly speaking, is unnecessary and they are doing it the hardest way possible. Because the answer is that it is for show. It is all a performance. In his remarkably prescient 1899 book, The Theory of the Leisure Class, Thorsten Veblen coined the terms conspicuous consumption and conspicuous leisure. Suggesting that those with wealth and power, no longer having any economic production to contribute themselves, instead contribute to the production and consumption of leisure. And those so true so fucking true and these are all different bubbles right so they're different like bubbles we're all talking about shades of blue but different blues sydney says have you ever seen those influencers who pretty much cause like poverty yes 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 right yes maiden says okay but making bread from scratch isn't that weird come on now hold on i agree with you maiden because i make bread from scratch all the time my mom did now there's a different bubble than the bu so okay this is so strange the bubble that makes food from scratch at home, meaning like you make your food, is different than the bubble that warms up food they got delivered or different from the bubble that eats frozen food or different than the bubble that gets takeout. So like we are not a takeout family. Like my husband and I do not get takeout. We do not go to restaurants. We only do it as a like a first I did it a lot when I came to Europe because I was coming to Europe and I was like going to eat the food, obviously. Now that I've been here almost a year. That is not a part of our budget. We go on occasion as a huge treat to ourselves. Will we get takeout? Will we go to a restaurant? Like once every two months, once a month. It doesn't matter because right now that's like, that's just how the vibe is, okay? But there are people who think it's so cool that I make food, that my husband goes to the store and we make dinner every night and say, what do you want to eat for dinner? That we decide every day, what do you want to eat? right? Like that is a very different lived experience than someone who's only eating frozen food or someone who only gets takeout. So then there's the other bubble of the people that are like, I make everything from scratch, including this. Now, how many of us have wanted a KitchenAid to make pasta? But it's too much work. Now, my brother, Mark, he makes sometimes his own like pasta. I don't know why. I think he it's because he's gay. Like, <laughs> But like sometimes he'll just like, He'll send us a video and be like, I just made this. And I'm like, why? It's because he can. 
It's literally because he can. Now, my sister-in-law is very talented. The one who's married to Farm Brother, she's so talented. She paints, she calligraphy, she sings. She's so beautiful. Everything about her is just like, what? She, she is the dream. She's the trad wife dream. But at the same time, she homeschools the kids. They're running like a little farm. They have responsibilities. She does make everything from scratch and it costs money. My brother is a hustler. He makes a lot of money. He makes good money. They wouldn't have been able to afford that life, their organic food and stuff, everything from scratch, if they didn't have the money and they weren't fully at home and they weren't, my brother also works from home. You know what I mean? But there is something about time. Now, my partner and I, we do spend hours of our day cooking and cleaning. You also have to clean after you cook. And it get messy up in here, okay? It gets messy up in here. And a lot of people don't have that time. A lot of people both work out of the home. A lot of people are commuting. My mom, she cooks our whole life. My dad cooks. They make things from scratch all the time. My parents are always sending me videos of things they made at home. But that's different than a couple who's both working outside the home, who's both commuting. They don't have five, six, seven hours to be cooking and cleaning every day like that. Okay, or however many, however long it takes you. Those consumption practices, those leisure activities are conspicuous precisely because that is how the leisure class signals their difference from the working class, signals their exceptionality and their superiority. Facts, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if you're an actual trad wife in a regular marriage, that's not with some really rich person. You don't have time. To you don't have time to make cereal. You're actually taking care of two, three kids. You're probably gonna be going to buy stuff, managing the day-to-day -day household. You ain't got time to be You're making- You're gonna buy fucking bread. Okay. You're gonna buy the motherfucking bread. What are you talking about? Now, this is a bubble thing. So they say, if you're really busy and you're a trad wife, you don't have time for this, you're gonna go buy bread. Yes, most people will buy their bread. My mom would mostly make her bread, but to be honest with you, she also bought a lot of bread, because it's true. My mom did both. It depended on how busy the day was. Sometimes she'd make the bread, sometimes she'd buy the bread. It was a combination of both decisions. And, you know, we only make certain kinds of bread. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's true. It just depends on the schedule. And my mom homeschooled some of us. We had 10 kids, so it depends on which era of kid. But most of us, I was homeschooled till I was 15. My sister-in-law homeschools her kids, and she makes stuff. But sometimes you just want to buy the bread because it is time-consuming. So you have to ask yourself, how much time do I have today? And what do I want to get done? talking about you're not gonna fucking sit here and do it you're gonna buy it why because i ain't got no time because i gotta go back home i gotta pack lunches i gotta do the house i gotta clean i gotta do laundry i gotta help with homeworks now i can't remember now but i think my mom said when all her kids were at home she did an average of like 15 loads of laundry a week something like that which is insane i mean just between my husband and i we're always doing laundry we're always doing dishes because we cook we are always doing dish i'm never doing sorry i don't do dishes he does dishes but like he is always doing dishes there's basically almost never the sink never has dishes or never not has a load going because we cook everything some people don't cook in their kitchen because they don't want to dirty the appliances have you ever been in a kitchen that's never been cooked in have you ever been in a kitchen that's never been cooked in it is very interesting. I remember I walked into this guy's apartment once and I was like, oh, you've never cooked in this kitchen. He's like, nah, dude, I don't cook in my kitchen. No way. No way, dude. And I was like, that's interesting. That's interesting. Like you have a whole kitchen you don't use versus us. Like, you know, we cook. Girl, we, you know, we cook. You can tell we cook in this kitchen. You know, now for all of you saying my mom is the goat for doing so much laundry, don't worry. Once we got old enough, we all had a chore and my brother's chore was laundry. So she had help. But, you know, yeah, dishes. My job was dishes. So between my mom and I, we did a lot of dishes. My mom always helped us with like our inside chores, obviously. It's not like she never did dishes or never did laundry. But it was nice to have some kids that could help out because, girl, we always doing stuff. I'm, a, I'm not going to do the fucking bread. I'm going to buy it. Same thing with baking a pie. Oh, I'm going to bake a pie. Shut up. I'm going to drift at best. FYI, I am making Middle Eastern sesame cookies this week. So I'll record it for the behind the scenes for YouTube. But we're doing beef jerky this month for the recipe. And we're doing, see, I do a lot of food for my behind the scenes stuff because I just love food. But we're doing sesame Middle Eastern cookies. They're like my favorite. And we're doing beef jerky stuff this week because, you know, that's just what my diet is reflecting. So I was like, oh, I'll just share with you guys what I'm eating right now. Homemade beef jerky is the way to go, girls. It's so much better than store-bought. 
I'm gonna thrift at best. I don't have time to sit here and be like, hmm, contemplating. No, I got shit to do. Shit need to be titty up in the house. Ain't nobody got time for that. Most of you don't have a house and don't know how how much it is, how much, how much time, how much time consuming it is. You're gonna sit here and be like, oh, I'm gonna do this shit for He's right. Things do get replaced. So an example is like, okay, I wanna make bread from scratch, which means I'm not gonna have time to do this thing. Or okay, I wanna do this, but I don't have time to do this thing. You can make bread from scratch every day, but that means something else isn't getting done. And so every day, especially as a neurodivergent or as a chronically ill person myself, I have to make a decision about what's getting done today because I only have so many spoons and then I'm tired, girl. I'm sleepy. So then you have to make a decision. Okay, what are my spoons like? What can I do today? What can I get done today? And then on top of that, even neurotypical people, they're commuting. They're tired. Life is stressful. They have bills to pay. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make pasta, fresh pasta. From it takes long. Ain't nobody got time for that. Like a working class motherfucker that that like you got a normal job and a normal payout. No, you don't because you're trapped. So you don't work. So he has to work twice as hard. Well, you won't have to. Hey, what did you do? What did you do today, honey? Oh, today I made bread. Yeah, made bread. Go buy it, stupid. I Hear me out. Sometimes it's just nice to make bread at home. But yeah, we have a bakery. We just go to the bakery. It's like a euro whatever, grab some bread. You know what I mean? It is good. And it's good bread, bro. The bakery got some good bread. Oh, now I want to walk to the bakery and get some like, oh, the oh, Croatian bakeries, bro, trying to get me fat, bro. Oh, they're. I have to avoid the bakery. I just like can't go there. I'm not even going to play with you. Croatia bakeries everywhere. And every time I pass by it, I'm like, we got to get it all. We got to buy it all. We got to buy all of it. Whatever it is, I want it all. It's so good, bro. Oh, man, I'm getting them. The reason why bakeries are popular, even in the most traditional places, is because people go to the bakery to get it done because it's too time consuming. I got to wait three hours for that shit to bake? No, who's let that? me buy it. Who's your making cereal? Nobody's making yeah, Who's making cereal, bro? Maybe granola. My mom makes her own granola cereal, you know, by mixing it together. But like, who out here making real cereal from scratch, girl? Pasta, yeah. I could understand. Why? Because getting store... Pasta is easy. Pasta is not the and same. Pasta is easy. Still. Still, kind of, still time consuming though. Still time consuming, but and pasta, like even for Italians, for example, they make a lot of their own pasta. Or they go to the place that make the pasta. Or they scratch. are really good. Or, or yes, yes, fair. If you have access to that, so, it's, it's look, just not a real tread life. That's all I'm saying. Remember in the fifties? No, you don't remember because you were not born. I don't remember because I was not born too. But in the fifties, you know there were some wives. You know when they got together, you know, and oh look, I baked the pie, that, and you were better than the one that that bought it. There's a hierarchy. Oh, this is good. Let him finish. Let him finish. It's homemade. When you receive someone at home, I had time to bake the pie myself. Right? Right? Cherry pie that I make. Oh, yeah, it's home cooked. Oh, you're so good. That is, and it's, it's just the same thing. Yeah, but. It, yes. Okay, this is what I find fascinating about this bubble. There's a hierarchy, and then there's a judgment. Even I have it in me. I judge, not condemn but i do gay judge like a little bit of a side eye people who only buy frozen food or people who only eat takeout because i'm like and i'm doing the same thing where it's like somebody's like you don't make your cereal from scratch and i'm like nobody got time for that okay but it's interesting it's interesting the way we do judge like oh you had you make your own food oh my god you made your own chicken at home Oh my God, you like did this, like, wow, you made your own. Is that the new like Gucci is we're bragging about like I had enough time at home. Do you know that I had the time to make food? Wow. But kinda, I think kinda, I think I've internalized some of that myself where I'm like, oh yeah, I'd be judging, bro. I'd be judging. But then I was like, okay, why do I do that? And a part of it is that I just, obviously I think, think it's really special to make food at home. I think it's really intimate. My husband and I eat our food together and something about eating together is so important to me. Like spending time together, being in each other's space, looking at each other when you take a bite of food and you're like, ooh, we killed it today. You're like bonding with that person. You're like sharing that intimacy with that person. But then at the same time, like, yeah, I think there's like a judgment there and I definitely don't like that. I don't think that's a good thing to set up this judgment, you know what I mean? But it's kind of, 
it is, it kind of just means something beautiful when someone makes something. I love a homemade pie. I just think it's superior. Now, I'll even be honest with you. Certain kinds of bakeries here are better than others. Like in America, a lot of the bakeries are just frozen food. Like, ton, like I used to work in adjacent to the bakery at the grocery stores. The food at the grocery stores are less good than an actual bakery that makes everything every day. So it's also a quality relationship I feel like I'm having. I genuinely don't like most of the baked goods in a bakery because like I know they're frozen breads. I can taste the difference between that and something that was made fresh. So a part of you, like a part of me, when I say I want a donut or I want fresh bread, I want that taste I get when I know it was made that morning. Versus when I say like, oh, I'm, I'm okay with grocery store food, I'm saying I'm okay with the fact that I know this, is, this was frozen. It's like fresh lasagna over frozen lasagna. I, the difference is so clear. It's so obvious, the difference. But also, not everybody got time to make homemade lasagna. You know? So it's it's a matter of also experience. And I maybe your palate's not as sensitive as mine, but like I, you know how you can taste water? Like you guys know the differences of taste of water. I'm very specific about the water I like or the water tastes I prefer. I obviously will drink water. Water is water. But I have a preference for the kind of water I drink. And it's like, it's just, you know what I mean? Same thing with food. And so a part of me does almost feel sad for people that are missing out on like fresh baked things or fresh cooked food. Like some part of me is like, oh, you've never lived. But that's because I live to eat. So also that's something I have to recognize about myself. I live to eat. I fucking love food, bro. I love cooking food. I love baking. I just love being in the zone. Like, shh. Like, I just love that stuff. Like, I don't like boxed cakes. Like, you know when people are, oh, this is, okay, no judgment. People that are like, oh, I baked a cake. I was like, did you get premix from the store? Because I can taste the difference between like cake you've made from scratch. And again, it's all great. I'll eat it all. I'll eat all of it. I'll eat all of it. Okay, I'll eat all of it. I'm just saying you've never lived until you've made a cake from scratch and you're like, oh, this is good. But then how far back do you go before you feel like you did it from scratch? Do I have to go get the wheat from the fields? You know? Mm. You know? But it's on TikTok and it makes money. Whenever they're telling you, oh, look, I made this from scratch, it screams, I'm better than y'all. Because I do this on the regular, even if they don't. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's true. I think people do think they're better than you. Or... They think they're getting the better part of life. I do think in some way it's better, but in some way it's too much. Better than a speak. Because you think about it, she's like, I asked my toddlers what they wanted. Okay. They said they mm. wanted cereal. Let me make it from scratch. Shut oh, up. Oh, shut. Shut yes. up. I wanted a Pop-Tart the other day. I was like, oh, I really want a Pop-Tart. My partner was like, what, what's a Pop-Tart? And I was like, oh. He's like, what's a strudel? And I was like, I really want a strudel or a Pop-Tart. You know, Pillsbury strudels. I wanted the frozen strudel so bad. Or I really wanted a cinnamon Pop-Tart. I was like, oh, I want a brown sugar cinnamon Pop-Tart, bro. And he's like, what is that? And so I Googled it on TikTok and we found recipes to make a Pop-Tart at home. And I was like, we should do this because they don't sell those. I can't get those items here in Europe. And I was like, oh, we should make these. Not because I think I'm better, but because I literally just can't. I would eat the frozen shit. I would eat the full on processed shit because that's the shit that brings back memories but I have no access to it here so stop <laughs> they're better than us because they are so wealthy and well off that they have nothing more important to worry about True. and if we were to ever see trad wives perform essential productive domestic labor or see their husbands perform any domestic labor at all that would in fact mark them as failures as trad wives as Babelin wrote in 1899, again, he could have written it yesterday, application to productive labor is a mark of poverty and subjection. It becomes inconsistent with a reputable standing in the community. Because these videos are not instructional. They are maybe inspirational, but they are always performative. This is not real labor. This is symbolic labor. It is nothing more than social signaling that this woman and her family belong. Like this is not real labor. It's symbolic labor. That line like kind of blew my mind. Like it's not real labor. It's symbolic symbolic labor. And it that's that's why I think I skipped those videos. I love recipe food videos. I am always on TikTok. I have my favorite channels that I watch. There's some people I just I love. They're actually making food for their family. I don't know that cuz you know what? I never see her kids eating it. But I skip all her videos, so maybe I'm just missing it.
but I never see like the benefit of the food. And look, my sister-in-law makes everything. She loves making stuff from scratch. I make things from scratch. And my family and I, we have like a food. We're always sending food back and forth to each other. And I think that's a part of the secondary part of the labor is like I want to see people enjoying the labor. And I never see people enjoying the labor in those videos. But maybe I just never will finish them. I never watch them all the way through. That's probably true. So then I'm like, oh, like where's the family? Where's the intimacy? Where's the, where's the thing? Where's the thing that tells me that signals to my brain Real people benefited from this labor. Because labor without the benefiter makes no sense to me. It feels performative. Oh, look, I did this thing just for the talk. I did this thing just for the gram. I want y'all to think about the whole video. Her makeup's all done. She's in a nightgown, so she's like kind of singling. That's why I couldn't do cooking videos. When people are like, you should do cooking videos. I was like... You got to like get pretty and the thing's got to be perfect and the microphone's got a good, like, what am I, Rachel Ray? What am I, Emerald? I don't got time for this. I don't got time to perform cooking. Cooking is fast. That's why my videos, you guys see me in my behind the scenes videos when I do cooking videos, it's, I'm usually not in makeup. My hair is up. I usually am in PJs and I'm just cooking and I'm being messy and things fall to the floor and I don't give a fuck. If you want Britney cooking videos, the closest you're going to get is the behind the scenes videos. I ain't no cooking TikToker. I don't got time to make it look good. I don't got time to do that because I just, it's too much work, you know? She has everything done here. Then she's got the wooden bowl. Everything is perfectly laid out in the no. kitchen, exemplarily clean at all times. Like this is, this is a set. It's a, it's like a little film set it's for a her. It's a set. It's a film set. Exactly, Abba. It's like a film set. Everything. It's like the only person that I've seen all done up when they cook is Yada. And she's on Food Network. So it's going to look good for TV. That's the same thing. It's a performance. And it is also how she builds and signals her value if you are the sort of person who operates within an exchange economy. Diana says when you vlog, it's like doing everything twice. One thousand percent. Economy that assigns high and low value to human beings. Because her value to her husband is not in her ability to care for the home or care for the children, right? Anyone who is able to engage in this level of conspicuous leisure has somebody that they are paying to do all of those things. No, her value is instead in her ability to perform the role of trophy wife and to be the ultimate realization and personification of her husband's socioeconomic prowess. Because trad wives are conspicuous consumers, yes, but it is the audience's consumption of trad wives that truly makes them valuable to their husbands. That's a ridiculous video. I'm sorry. Yes, Maddox says, that's why I love the silent Korean Japanese cooking vlogs. Love those. <laughs> that's ridiculous. At the end of the day, should you be able to do this if you want to? Sure. Absolutely. But this new obsession that everyone has with being a trad wife, especially in a day and age where that financial possibility is dwindling like crazy. It's a bit concerning that I'm seeing how popular this new fad is. And look, I can understand that this movement has grown popular in the wake of telling women that having a job is the most important thing in the world. The counterbalance to that from a feminist standpoint is the reality that like being at home for your family, taking care of them is also a wonderful thing. And so I can understand that messaging becoming more and more popular as a lot of women felt unfulfilled by having a career. But I think it's important not to just veer off in the other swing of the- Based, totally true. Yep, exchange one bubble for the next. I can't believe the guy who originally, like he was reading his his post said my my, like my wife just or my girlfriend basically just wants to like give up on our goals and be like a trad wife all of a sudden. And I'm like, what? No. Like that's so weird. Why? Why? Because you're giving up. For some people, this fantasy life is giving up. Yes. Oh, Lexi says it's a fantasy that I think people are clinging to an escapism. It feels like a version of giving up. I'll just go live in a cottage. I'll just be a trad wife. I just want I don't want to work. I don't want to work. I don't want to labor. We can tell the pendulum so hard. The reality is financially, most of us are not gonna be able to live that life. Most of us are gonna have to work. Both people in the couple are gonna have to have jobs. Mm -hmm. So the more that this TikTok stuff sells this thing, the more you start to realize like, realize like, oh, this is a weird thing. I actually read a story recently. Oh, what? I'm gonna read this story. Bit of background, we live in a major city. 
Uh, I earn an average salary. She earns an okay salary working as a store manager. Together we earn enough to pay the rent for a small fat flat, pay the bills, and have a small amount left over for some small luxuries, take out, going to the movies, etc. It takes forever for us to make substantial savings, most of which are going to this wedding, but we are doing okay. And that is with two incomes. While I do earn more than her, it's not mega bucks more, and we drop just one income, we would just be surviving. True, her salary isn't anything glamorous, but it's enough to help pay the bills and add to the savings pot. Now for the issue. Shortly after New Year's, Kate and I were just chilling on the couch after work day when Kate brought up the post-wedding life. It mentioned the idea of becoming a trad wife after marriage. I had never heard of this before and asked her what that was. She explained that it meant traditional wife and it was for a wife that stayed at home, cooked, looked after the household chores, including cleaning and cooking, and more importantly, looked after the husband by attending to his needs. I said that sounded like a housewife and she said it was more than just a normal housewife. Look at that. I want to be a trad wife, not a housewife. Ew. I want to be a trad wife. Ew. A housewife? Gross. I want to be a trad wife. Don't you fucking love it, bro? Uh, Vampiric says, wait, but Brittany, I just had a brain explosion. What if the trad wives are just cooking for real and getting money off the cooking videos online while being a housewife? Yes. I think that's obviously also part of the illusion is that she's just at home and she's not earning an income. But if you have a social media presence, then you are working a job. It's kind of the irony between all these people that literally have jobs and then talk about how they're stay-at-home parents, but like you're working at home. A stay-at-home mom who makes zero income and is just hanging out with the kids is doing different labor than a mom that also works from home and has part-time of the day with no kids. It's different than a mom who sends her kids to school for most of the day and then stays home. It's different than, is different than, is different than, then is different then, right? Because a trad wife does everything herself to look after the home and the husband without any paid work. <laughs> run. Run, baby, run. R run, run. Because, because, being a trad, right there in the formulation of it, no, 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 it's not a housewife. I'm better than that. That's... That's what it is. I'm not a housewife. Exactly. No, 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 no. Not a housewife. I am better. It's she wants the position. She wants the 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 title. The title sounds exciting. I'm a tried wife. You know what? Being a tried wife is is a privilege. It's a privilege. Yep. Yep. You do. I mean, there's this the kind of like there's a part of the bubble that is sort of a it's almost like a privilege to have kids. Like in some part, in some bubble, in some reality, it is a privilege to have kids. It is a privilege to stay at home. It is a privilege in many ways, right? To be able to have a person who can afford this. Now for other people, they don't see as much of a privilege and maybe it's not, maybe it's just hard. But I think in this particular bubble, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Interesting. Not her or you make enough for her to be a trad wife. Miles, a big question is, y'all ain't got no kids. Y'all ain't got. So this is interesting too. So they don't have any kids. They're not even married yet. They had a plan and now she wants to be a trad wife. And that's like a values thing to me where I'm like, no, anything that it takes for the team to win, that's what we should do. But it's the fact that she wants to be a trad wife. Not that they as the team need her to be a trad wife. Do you see the difference? There's no problem with being a stay-at-home partner. I have a stay-at-home partner. But, but that's because it makes the team succeed better than if he worked out of the home or at all, right? So that's why we do it because it's better for the team. But in this situation, it's worse for the team that she becomes a trad wife. Like, what's the point, right? They don't need her to stay home. There's no reason for her to stay home. And that was never their plan because they need her second income, right? With my income, we are not like in the same like we're not in survival mode right i'm not like if we like if we lost my income that would suck but him not working i can still pay my bills so i'm good right but we don't have kids we don't have those extra bills we have enough we have we have to worry about my medical bills okay we have other things to worry about right so the idea of her staying at home when they need that second income is kind of crazy to me like, that's an interesting financial decision. Like, why would you do that? It doesn't make sense to me. Like, the goal should be, how can we make the most money while keeping our sanity? 
And how can we make the most money while maintaining our joy as a couple? That's what you should do. You should make the most money while maintaining your mental health and sanity. So that's what my partner and I do. We do whatever it takes to bring us to our joy, like the highest joy financially and spiritually and like emotionally and mentally. With them, the husband, future husband, is already stressing about the idea that she wants to be a stay-at-home wife or a stay-at-home trad wife, a trad wife, because it's like, why? That sounds stressful. We're losing. Like, let's say she manages a store. Let's say she's making, what, 50K? Maybe? That's a lot of money. Even if she was making 40K, that'd be a lot of money. 30K? Just to lose 30K a year? That's a lot of money. Especially if it would make it so they didn't have a savings after or they were truly, like, worried and stressed. Like, it sounds like it would make it more stressful. Why would you bring stress into your marriage? If being a stay-at-home wife is going to add stress to the marriage, why would you do it? If being a stay-at-home wife adds less stress to the marriage, why wouldn't you do it? That's how I think about it. Like, is this going to add more stress to our marriage or less? Because if it's going to add stress to the marriage, we're not doing it. And no kids. That's not a tried wife. Y'all ain't got no babies. That's a motherfucker that stays home and do nothing. You a leech. You a leech. (laughs) I do think that's leech behavior. If there's no reason, if it is a negative to the relationship, I do think it's leech behavior. How do you know the difference between leech behavior or not? It makes the relationship better or worse. If this would make your relationship worse, it's leech behavior. If it makes it better, then you're just making the team win. If it makes the relationship better and the situation better and your finances better and your mental health better, because remember, two people working doesn't guarantee more income. It just sounds like it does. Because if you're paying the rest of that income into mental health bills because now you're crashing at work every day, you ain't making more money, girl. It was like the nanny families I worked for would spend 50K a year on my salary. And I'm like, you could just stay home. Because now you're you're making, what, an extra 10K after me? I had a family that was spending so much on my salary that the person who was paying my salary, like the one person's income, the husband's income, he was making $10,000 beyond that. I'm like, why are you doing this to yourself? Why not just stay home? And like make like a little bit less money, but now you're not spending it on all these, all the all these extra things like my salary and other things. And I get it. They want to keep their resume fresh. They want to keep working in their industry. Their kids are going to go to school one day. I get it. But girl, you know. Mm-mm. I want to be a trad wife. No, no, you don't want to do shit. That's it. Also, I like how she's like, no, a housewife is different than a trad wife. No, it's not because a trad wife does everything in ca- yeah what is everything what does she think the trad wife's gonna do this fantasy of making everything from scratch you think home home like house moms can't do that too or stay-at-home moms like what do you think is happening don't get me wrong there's so much to do when you're a stay-at-home parent and there's so much to do if you're not if you if, even if you don't have kids depending on your like is someone disabled is there mental health like challenges is someone neurodivergent is there chronic health issues like does she have a reason for it? Is it like she's not in her dream job? Is is there a dream job? Does she always dream of not having a job? There's so many things that, or is she just on TikTok falling in love with this aesthetic and thinking, okay, my life will be better if I do this. Will it? Will it be better? Taps to look after the home. Well, what does that even mean? What are you going to... I mean, that, 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 justifies, that's just, that justifies me not working and not bring money. I do everything here. It, so, so what, you bring the money. So what is she gonna make cereal from scratch too? Yeah. And then add it on top oh, of the thing. You know what? Let me Google. What's the difference between a housewife and a trad wife? <sighs> That's a good question. Nothing. The, there's, there's no difference. But she wants to make it sound like she's better than that. You okay. know what it's saying? It's saying a, a trad wife is a housewife with a social media spin. They're basically branding it different. It's a brand, it's the same but it's just what it is. I was thrown off guard by this as Katie has never shown desire to just stay at home before. And the only time it was discussed was in relation to kids, which we said she was happy being a stay at home mom for when the kids were young, because on her salary, we'd probably be paying more for childcare anyway. That makes sense. No, that, no, that's fine. That's not the same thing. That's not the same thing. That's okay. not the same thing. Okay, good. I'm glad they, t- they, distinct, they, they distinguish that. Okay. More to the point, the idea of her just staying at home all day and cleaning cooking is a bit strange to me when we live in such a small place. Red flag. Between the two of us, we can clean the whole flat in half a day. It takes me about half an hour to vacuum and mop all the floors, for example. When I was self 
process that I thought she was joking, but she was dead serious. I was then very surprised and asked her what made her suddenly desire to just stay at home and work. <clears throat> to my shock, she said, TikTok of all things. Apparently there are videos and TikTokers that are these trad wives that talk about how great the lifestyle is and how happy their marriages are. These trad wives claim their husbands are always happy and home life is the best. So Kate wants that for us too. Yo, bro, bun that. I told her that wouldn't make me happy. It makes no sense. We live in a small flat, requires low upkeep. We can't afford it. Again, I understand her income isn't great, but it's pitiful. She gave a non-committal shrug and thought that was the end of and I thought that was the end of it. Nope. She approached me again a few days later with the idea. I told her I was against it. The fact that they're not agreeing is the problem. The fact that they don't have the same vision for the team is the red flag. It's not even that she wants to be a stay-at-home partner. It's the fact that he isn't on board with it. It's not the fact the fact is they're not working in con like they're not working in conjunction. That's the red flag. I'm not even upset that she necessarily wants to be a, a, a trad wife. Fine. Why? Will it make this relationship better? Will it be better for our lives? Because it sounds like he's saying it's going to make it worse for our lives. And she's saying, but it will make it better for my life. It feels a little bit like she's thinking of herself and she's not thinking about the team. And he's thinking about the team and the long term. That's the issue. The issue isn't that she wants to stay home. The issue is it sounds like it's coming at the expense of the success of the marriage. <sighs> I try to pry more about why she wanted to suddenly be a trad wife. She kept banging on about TikTok and how she really does feel that her staying home would be the best thing for our marriage. She keeps bringing it up and now it seems she's adamant. I can't get anything more out of her apart of like, it's good for our marriage. I watched some of these TikTok videos. And no, apart from her saying TikTok says it's good for our marriage. Sorry, but they come across as really creepy. These trad wives seem to do nothing but dress like Lucy Ball and cook bread from scratch. It's bizarre and not something I'm looking for in a lifetime partner. Your partner got in. Vampiric says she needs a rich man. Yeah, that's the thing. If you want a rich guy who will pay for you to stay home and do whatever you want all day, you do you. You guys know this TikToks where the husbands are stressing over work and then their wife calls them and goes, I'm eating popcorn right now. I'm eating popcorn right now. And it's like, okay. It sounds like that. It sounds like she wants to have this dream of just like, that's the thing is like that girl, the Mormon girl, that Nina girl, as far as I know on YouTube, her husband's like well off. So as far as I know, they're rich. I mean, their kitchen is rich. So like they're not, you know what I mean? This is, it's like she wants this fantasy. Like, look, at the end of the day, you got to make the team win. And unless the team is incredibly wealthy or you're both willing to live at a, 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 a specific level. Because I'm assuming she wants to quit her job but live at the same level. Because like, mm-mm. That's not how that's going to work. Like, look, I have a standard of living I demand we live at. And if it ever gets threatened, like new things have to happen. So even Brittany, like I've already lived in enough shitty apartments. I've already dealt with shitty neighbors. I've already, I've already lived in the crappiest of crap neighborhoods. I'm past that part of my life. Okay. We have to live at this standard because this is like where my life is at right now. And it, like we have to do that. And that motivates us to stay at a certain level and do a certain thing in a certain kind of lifestyle. Right. we got to pay our bills on time. We have to have like X, Y, Z, like these are the priorities. This is our goal. This is where we want to be in 10 years. That's a very different lifestyle than somebody who is wanting to quit their job, but not understanding how it's going to impact the lifestyle. It feels like she doesn't understand that he's like, hey, if you do this, we're going to have less money. I think she somehow expects him to make the same amount of money or something, right? Influenced by TikTok. I don't know how much more I can tell Kate about how much I'm against this and it's falling on deaf ears. As a result, I'm seriously reconsidering our relationship. Good. This is what I think. I think a lot of women and a lot of men feel a lot of insecurity about their future. Mm. And when you're in a job field you don't like because you chose a wrong career or maybe you're feeling unfulfilled with your life, you look at these women on TikTok and you're like, oh, Maybe if I stayed at home, I like caring for people. I like caring for my boyfriend. I'd love to care for the house, and that'll make me feel fulfilled. Now, that may be true for some people, but it's not going to be true for all of you. Mm -hmm. The same way not everyone is built for a lifelong job. Not everyone's built for a trad life. Not everyone even has the ability or the privilege to. Not everyone's going to be able to work in the field that they're super passionate about. You know, some of y'all want to write poetry for the rest of your life. It's not possible for everybody, okay? So what this really comes down to is I think a lot of people are just running away from the fact that they're insecure about their future and they're just latching onto things that they see on social media. I agree with this. And I think this is so true. I actually have no desire to be a stay-at-home partner or a stay-at-home wife or a mother. Like I have no desire at this point in my life to be like a homemaker. Like that's not interesting to me. Not that it ever was, to be honest. Um, 
But yeah, I'm not that person. Like I do not dream of being a stay-at-home partner. Like that's not my dream. You know what I mean? My dream is to work. I love to work, you know? Discord says Trad Wife was primarily religious based on religious I a religious idea of traditional marriage. So it has shifted to be similar to housewife. Trad wife was specifically the idea of stay-at-home uh mother housewife that is upholding this traditional religious values of marriage. Interesting how it's changed. Well, I think that that's my understanding is like trad wives where like men are the head of the household, men are the breadwinners, like women are there to like dote on their husbands. And so, yeah, it is kind of interesting to see it shift into like, why don't you just say, say stay at home partner? Like, that's what I call it. I have a stay at home partner. Like, I don't know. I have a partner who stays at home and does all the household stuff, but I don't call him like a house husband. I mean, that's kind of cute though. House husband, housewife, house husband. That's kind of cute. Like the anime house husband, you know? That's kind of cute and everything, but at the end of the day, you know, everyone has everyone has different needs in their relationships. The only issue I see with this situation is that she's not thinking about the team. She's just thinking about herself. Be it the people who think that they're going to be entrepreneurs, they're going to make it big. The guys who think if they just go into crypto and then they're going to be rich and they're going to be fulfilled. Everyone's looking for a quick way out. Quick way. Easy. I'll just I'll just buy a cabin in the middle of the woods and I won't have to deal with people. I'll just make my own food and collect my own rainwater. Easy. That's essentially what it is. Wherever you look on the internet, this is just another version of that. I know guys who are like, I'm going to start. Good bubble observation, Abba. Good bubble observation, Abba. Yes. Abba's right. He's observing the bubble. Very. He's seeing the bubble differences. He's like, this is just the same thing. He... Yep. A, a, I'm gonna start uh, doing an online shop. And I, I saw this course on Andrew Tate. That's another one. Everyone is looking for the quick way. OnlyFans girls are doing it. Everyone's trying to find their way out of the matrix, if you will. Yep. And the truth is, there are no easy answers. Oof. It is very hard to find your place in the world. And in that insecurity, I can completely understand falling for these fans. It just doesn't make it healthy. And I think Trad Wife is just another example of that. A lot of you guys are going to be stuck at home with the kids. And you know how many times you hear about women like, I'm going insane having to take care of these kids all day long. I just want to put them in daycare. I'm fucking sick. Not everyone's built for it. So. Exactly. Play to your strengths, guys. Play to your strengths as a single person, as a sibling, as a wife, as a cousin, as a whatever. Play to your strengths. I play to my strength. I'm the best at working. I could do it all day. It gives me spoons. I want to do that. I played in my strength. That's why I wake up every day and I'm like, let's go, bro. Let's fucking go. Even though I'm fighting anxiety every time I stream, even though I'm fighting the stress, even though I'm chronically ill, even though, even though, even though, I ultimately, I'm playing to my strength. Working is my strength. If you put Brittany in a working position, she will 1000% succeed. Like there's like, if you want to make a bet, bet on Brittany to work. That's like that 100% winning every time. You know how the house always wins? Not if you bet on Brittany. But... In a different situation, if you put me in a different situation, like I'm not playing to my strength. Like if you try to put me in school, there is a good chance I won't I won't uh, graduate with that degree. There's a good chance if somebody was like, here's $100,000, go to school. That might be a bad bet. I'm just saying I might not be able to make it through school. There is a pro that's that might be a bad bet. But Brittany working, put me in boss, put me in coach. I will win this. I will win this for the team. Play to your strengths. Be careful what you try to bite onto. And secondly, mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope this fad dies because it's just not financially responsible. And it's not reasonable for most of you. And you really just see the, you just really, you just see the the, op, the, 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 the the positive side of it. You really see the good and the glamour and everything and stuff. Ooh, she looks so good. Ooh, she's cooking. It's great. And she's saying, my marriage is great. Yeah, because the person has the means for that. Hmm? But you're going to, you have to have the money. You got to make a lot. You got to make enough money. You're going to be trad wife and you're going to make all everything from scratch and then he's... Or you don't make enough money and it's still a struggle. Like a lot of people who have kids before they're financially ready. Yeah, it's a huge struggle. It's very stressful. Right? It's just stressful. You're going to have to have a beer with his boys and it's like, you never spend time from... You never spend time with me. <laughs> trad wife, you need to do some cooking over there. I'll be with my boys drinking beer. That's also that. Different bubbles, different bubbles with different vibes too. What's the expectation of the behavior? Is this religious centered? Is it secular centered? Oh, because you're trad now. 
You can't say much. Facts. My part of the job is I brought I brought I brought the money. I brought the money up and you cook and you clean. I don't have to take you out. I will eventually, but right after you do the, the dishes. I'll I'll say I'll say this too. It's not fun. I'm always stuck with the kids. That's your job definition. But but that's a specific bubble. Cause like I grew up with a stay at home mom. And we were always together as a family. My dad never ditched us to go hang out with the men or boys. Like, what? No, my dad had a family to spend time with his family. So also different bubbles adhere to different cultural expectations. My brother doesn't go out to hang out with his buddies. He hangs out with his kids and his wife. That's why he works so hard, so he can hang out with them, right? Like, we, I come from a background where you have a family so you can spend time with them. You don't have a family so you can spend time with your friends. Like, don't get me wrong. Do they see their friends? Do they have weekend events? Like, the weekends are friend times. Like the weekends or when like Sundays we have get togethers. Let's like kind of like, oh, we'll see the we'll see the cousins or the family on Sundays and not every Sunday. But the point of having a family is to spend time with them. So this this other bubble, that's the traditional wife and like the wife stays in the kitchen, that bubble where the guy also goes out to hang out with his boys. That's a very that's another different cultural bubble as well. I'm glad we should we should be have a weekend now. Nope. No, the kids, the kids are not in kindergarten. And like in my family, like my dad changed diapers. He helped with the kids. He obviously like spent as much time with us as possible. My brother, like when my sister-in-law goes to sleep, my brother takes over at night. So like, the, again, this idea of like, and then, and then we all hang out as a family. Like my parents, we, he doesn't, my parents, when I say they go to see their friends on the weekends, I mean as a family, like the family there's no boys nights or girls nights like i mean sometimes i guess that's a different cultural bubble though there's family nights like you bring your family i'll bring my family and all the families can hang out together does that make sense like for there to be a boys night is fine that's definitely a bubble but like my family was never a part of the boys girl bubble we were we all hung out together and then maybe we separated into different groups but we were always together in the same area you know, we're one of those. Again, every bubble's fine. It's just know which one you're signing up for. We need someone. True. So that's your try to wife. Hashtag mm, enjoy. Anything else? You grew tomatoes once, and you have a cat, and all of a sudden, then you think you're the queen of animals and 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 vegetables. Stop. This feels racist, sexist, misogynistic. This feels like they're talking about me. I did grow a tomato, and I grew peppers. And I was taking care of my cat, and I did feel like I could run a farm. I couldn't even feed myself for a week. Everybody relax. Yes, it's very fun to talk about, I'm going to live off the land, fuck the government, I'm going to do my own thing, I'm going to live in nature, different bubbles, but, you know, same ideas. I'm going to live in the land. And then you realize, like, girl, you can't even make enough food to feed yourself. A farm is just... <laughs> But anyways, game? let us know what you guys think in the comments below. How do you guys feel about this whole trad quan, trad wife and all? I mean, just a reminder that farmers themselves are literally suffering in America. And the idea that all of us like girlies are just going to like start a farm up and do it ourselves when I'm literally so chronically ill, I can barely like everybody relax. OK, I'm sorry. Just a reminder to all of you who like literally don't even work full time. Do you really think you're going to have a farm? You can't even work full time. Okay. <laughs> the labor intensity on your body, all you chronically ill girlies that are like, I'm going to have a farm. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not corn. I don't know what it is. Trot corn is a good name. Let What's me. your name, Trot corn? Thank you, Evan Preach for a great video. I saw that and I was just like, man, that's a good conversation to have. Now, they're all different bubbles. Let's actually check out Nina is her name, right? Nina. So we can judge her in a good way, in a non-personal way. She has 5 million followers on TikTok. We love that for her. So again, like no judgment, right? This is the journey she's on. I love that for her. Um, she's beautiful, got a good aesthetic. Apparently her and her husband were both models. She's got 5 million followers. This is the video. Everything's 16 million views, 25 million views, 16 million views. And look, I don't know if she's just selling the aesthetic or if she's making money off these videos, but if she's making money off these videos, then she's a working mother. She works from home. Like just everybody keep that in mind. You know what I mean? Like she works from home if that's the case.
she runs music on some of her videos so anything with music i'll probably skip we did an afternoon snack so we decided to get some tacos they're lucky's favorite food and i'm slowly getting around to them so we placed our order and obviously also had to get a large horchata i've been craving these so much this pregnancy so we always get one here are the things yo i, I miss mexican food bro She's really pretty, right? I make fresh butter at least once a week, so let's- I make fresh butter once a week. Make some roasted garlic and parsley butter today. I start by roasting my bulb of garlic in the oven and then pour some heavy cream into my kitchen aid. I whisk it on a low to medium speed at first. See the aesthetic, look that white. She's wearing white and baking. She's got a sweater over her. Like, look, if this is what you look like every day, I love that for you, girl, I could never. My favorite aesthetic is sweatpants and a sports bra. I make most of my videos in a bra. Like, I don't, I don't have time to look cute for a video. Like, I'm making bread. I wanna feel dirty. I wanna feel able to move around. I wanna feel messy. I don't wanna freak out if I'm gonna get, like, I don't, I'm not rich enough to dirty my clothes. I'm not rich enough to risk getting food on my clothes. Do you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of us can't afford to get food on our clothes. Like we want to buy a new wardrobe. I'm a messy cook, girl. She's out here just like all in white. That's beautiful. But I'm assuming it's because she also has the money, right? Like she just screams, I have money, which I love. But like also, you know, it's cool. It's cool if this is her job and this is her thing. But this idea that she's, um, I don't even know if she considers herself a trad wife home cooking she's just cooking from home right i'm not even sure she considers herself a trad wife do we know why people are using her as an example toddlers requested some yogurt this morning and we were running low so i just decided to make it myself okay homeward yogurt super easy we my people have been making homeward yogurt forever making homemade yogurt is the best thing ever it's super cheap it's really good for you and it tastes better i make better yogurt than the store will ever make me so just like fyi like, again, her aesthetic, everything's on point, but this feels all like business to me, which is great. But if she's running a business, then she's not a trad wife. Like with peace and love, even if she's selling you the trad wife aesthetic, if you're making money, you are no longer a stay-at-home wife. Making the money kind of defeats the definition here. So like with peace and love, she's a businesswoman and I love this. Self. They always have to have granola with their yogurt, so I'm I don't like granola with my yogurt. Of winding down Why is she mumbling? I don't see. I can't watch her. She's too quiet. She's too like. Sh but people love that shit. Yeah, she's obviously Today's not a stay-at-home wife, guys. So let's all the way down. Cute. Thank Q -Q -Q. Gut health is so important to me, which is why I started taking seed a few years ago. I like going to the gro Here's everything I eat in a day. I like going to the grocery store every two days. Central market? Okay. The three days instead of doing market for the Okay, love Here's that. Here's everything I eat in a day as someone that loves to cook, but is also 37 weeks pregnant. She's so quiet. Her audio is so quiet. toast in my house, so when my toddlers requested it. Yeah, this is cute and everything, but does she say she's a trad wife anywhere? Linktree, this is random. Instagram, what I eat in the day. She doesn't have trad wife in any of her tags. Everyone loves French toast in my house, so when my toddlers Yeah, guys, I don't even think, I think people are confused. Right? Like, I think people are confused. I don't think she's marketing herself as a trad wife. Hold on. Let's look at her link tree. My TikTok, my Instagram. Two million followers on Instagram. No trad wife tags. Nothing. Guys, I don't even think she's claiming to be a stay-at-home mom. I think somebody just, like, assumed that's what she was doing. But she's obviously running a business here. Why did we throw Nina under the fucking bus, bro? I feel like they threw her under the bus by claiming that she was the one pushing some sort of agenda. Yeah, she's not even claiming that title. They just put it on her. She's just, li she's an Instagrammer. She's literally an influencer. She's working. She's a working mother who makes food and Instagram posts for a living. She's killing it, bro. She looks good. She sounds good. I'm happy for her and her family. What? 
why in the world did people take this woman out of context? I didn't, she's not the trad wives. Now the trad wife people I have seen on TikTok do kind of also talk like a conservative and, you know, um, kind of say things like they do like push the the narrative of the stay at home mom in a, in a conservative way. Nina just seems like she's living her best fashion life. We love that for her. I love that aesthetic. Good for her. Ko says, is it just me or Central Market even more expensive than Whole Foods? I don't know what Central Market is, but I was wondering the cost of that grocery store. They have money. They might as well spend it. Like, it's not like they're poor, guys. This is not a poor family. We're watching a very well-off family live a very aesthetic life. And I love that. You know what I mean? If you want to see what a trad wife looks like, look up es Esther Williams. Here, let's check her out. TikToker sparked debate over traditional wife lifestyle. S.D. Williams, 26, became a traditional wife in 2022 after quitting college and bodybuilding. Her videos often cause surprise and even outrage among viewers because her comments about serving your husband or how it's okay to drop out of college. Why is trad wife content suddenly blowing up? The so-called trad wife trend. Fuck, I love that dress, bro. And I believe is blowing up. Well, First, let me explain that the trad wife lifestyle is not a trend. It is not trendy to be a traditional wife. This has been done since the beginning of time. However, content showcasing this lifestyle is becoming trendy and popular. Thus, the trad wife is trending right now, if that makes sense. Some of the reasons I believe that trad wife content is trending, one, because we have a culture. I think my brother's in the trad wife bubble where they don't wear makeup because that's a lot of makeup. Who has time to put on that much makeup? And is this, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think he's in that, but they're farmers. Like, they're not models with peace and love, you know? Now that my brother and his wife aren't like, kind of like, I don't know what they would call themselves. Maybe like modern farmers. You know what I mean? They're, I don't know if my sister-in-law be putting on like a whole face of makeup before she go to, you know, who got time for that? Culture that is trying to blur the distinction between being a man and a woman. Two, it is more popular to have two providers in the home rather than one provider and one homemaker. Three, we have a whole generation of women who are burnt out at their career and they're tired of being a provider and a homemaker when they come home from their job. Four, fast food is far more common to eat and pre-made and processed food rather than food from scratch, which is why you will see these made- Wait, good point. Snowfire says, well, I don't think she's a farmer. I know, my bad, bros. You're right. I, see, I'm mixing up bubbles myself. Where in my head, I'm like, oh, you're traditional. You're making everything from scratch. You also live on acreage and must have like, no, you're right. I'm, I don't know why I'm assuming that. A farmer with that hair? Nah, no, no, I'm sorry. You're right. I don't know why. I keep thinking like, what's the point of being a stay-at-home mom if you're not a farmer? <laughs> That doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. I'm so used to farm bubble. My bad. I'm so used to country bubble. Like literally, even my parents have five acres. So I'm I'm so used to like country people that I forget people. Yeah. Oh my God. Wait. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I guess of course. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I'm like having a realization where, yeah, a lot of the homeschoolers and stay-at-home parents I knew all had land. And so I keep imagining that bubble, but obviously some of them live in the city and some of them are like, yeah, okay. <laughs> From scratch, creators getting more popular. Five, basic homemaking skills being taught to young girls in the home has skipped a generation. Thus, we have a whole generation of women that are hungry to learn these basic skills and they are looking to the internet to teach them these skills. This is what happens when the pendulum swings so far one way it has to come back down. And a lot of people believe the trad wife movement is an overcorrection to modern feminism. I do not believe that. I believe the trad wife movement is bringing balance back to families. Anyways, those are- That's interesting. I mean, ultimately it's just about whatever works for your home style. Izzy says, literally same, I equate stay at home with farming. Yeah, okay, I think it's, so obviously in a lot of bubbles around the world, and not so erudite has talked about this as well, which I think is really important, is like most women worked. This illusion that women weren't working was never actually true because women always worked. They didn't just, they didn't always bring in an income, which is not the same thing. Like my grandma's always worked. It didn't mean they brought in an income, but like to raise kids on a farm, to raise kids in a village, to make your own food, like that's labor. And men were baking, women were baking, men, like you don't, 
you know, in a lot of the places around the world, everybody's working. It doesn't matter if someone's bringing in income, if you didn't do your job. So that's only in America is like a stay at home mom in some bubbles, like a privilege, because ultimately it's about working. How many people are working are stay at home partners who don't do anything like that's a privilege. You know what I mean? Like I can't just have a stay at home partner that doesn't do anything like we're not. What are we rich? Like, what do you think? We are rich? Like, we don't have time for this. Like, you can't just stay home and do nothing. Wait, what are we? Like, and even if we were that wealthy, it's an ick. I think it's icky to have a partner that stays home and doesn't do anything. I think it's kind of gross. But I also think it's kind of like indifferent. There's no, I'm not going to moralize it. Because like, you could spend your life like sniffing air and like playing video games for the rest of your life. Who cares? But like, for my life, I wouldn't want to come home. I wouldn't want to work all day and then see my partner doing nothing. I'd be like, what are you doing? That would feel like someone was taking advantage of somebody else, right? So in my head, when I think of stay-at-home partners or people who are working the home, I do think of people who are working. So moms are getting dirty. Mom, My mom had an apron on all of her life. I have an apron. I have a cute-ass apron. My mom has like, we buy cute-ass aprons because we know we're going to need to wear them because we're going to get dirty. What about scrubbing the floors and get, so like, Again, it's like this idea of I don't know which bubble is always being represented or talked about, but these are different bubbles. I never think of the stay at home. mom. Oh, my God. Do you know this bubble? Do you know the bubble of the stay at home mom or partner who has a nanny and a maid like the rich bubbles where the housewives don't even do anything like that's so beyond my reality. I love that for you. Not my reality. You know what I mean? So it is kind of interesting, this conversation. Do we want to watch more, need more of this girl? Are we curious? Okay, 100,000 followers. She's cute. She's definitely got a cute style and everything. I mean, this is super what, cute. What's wrong? What is it? But can I be honest with you? And I told my mom this because my mom was trying to help me find clothes to wear. I don't feel comfortable dressed up like this. Like, I love the aesthetic. I think it's so cute. She looks so pretty. I can't get anything done if I'm dressed up. I can't move. My body's uncomfortable. I feel like I'm thinking too much about being cute. I, I, I hate it. I literally hate it. My favorite thing to do is take off my clothes and get to work. I don't want to be cute all day. I literally, that's why I think being cute is so hard. I'm like, I don't have time for this, bro. You know what I mean? It's so cute, but I could not actually wear this for my daily stuff. I would need a dress or something I'm comfortable getting dirty. And I wouldn't want to get this dress dirty. You know what I mean? Like, it's so cute. But I, I feel like I wouldn't be able to do anything. My husband is always complaining that I'm always wet. And not in a good way. Like he'll hug me and he's like, why are you wet? And I was like, I did, I did, I did a dish. I washed a mug. I, when I wash, I'm just very messy. I'm just very like flour everywhere, food everywhere. Oh my God. Senpai says that's neurodivergence, Brittany. I mean, I, I am neurodivergent, right? And I definitely think that's a part of it. I just want to like, even after a stream, I take off my tops, like my shirts. And I just, I sit in a bra and shorts. I don't want to feel dressed up. I don't want to feel, I can't move. I feel trapped in my own aesthetic. You know, I just want to wear clothes that I, and I've been this way since forever, since day one, since I was a kid, I just wanted clothes. I wouldn't care if I ruined. So if I go out, right, if I go out, then I'll dress up, but I just want to get home and take off my clothes. Like I will dress up to go out. And then when I get home, I'm like, take it off, take it off, take it off, take it off. I feel trapped in my own clothes. Cam Cam says autism, your mother, Cam Cam. Okay. So it's interesting, like I just, this feels like a cage to me, but I, at the same time, I love it for them. I really love it for them. My mom does the same thing, by the way. My mom has her inside clothes and her outside clothes. So when my mom comes home after shopping, or not shopping, after working, she will take off her clothes and wear her inside clothes. My dad does the same thing. My dad comes home and takes off his work clothes right away and puts on his inside clothes. We have outside clothes and inside clothes. My parents are the same way. I don't want to clean in my outside clothes. I don't want to do things in my outside clothes. I want to get into my, oh, and then we have, okay, we have inside clothes. We have outside clothes. We have cleaning clothes and we have gardening clothes. Clothes we garden in, clothes we do house stuff in, clothes we wear out. Oh, and then we have church clothes. There's church clothes, outside clothes, inside comfy clothes, work clothes. We have clothes for events, for and we have shoes for the same thing. These are the working shoes. These are working shoes. These are inside shoes. We all have inside shoes, like shoes I only wear inside, shoes I only wear outside. Okay. 
So, okay. There's just clothes for everything. These are these clothes. These are these clothes. So I think when I'm wearing my outside clothes, like going out clothes, and I wear them inside, it feels like, why am I wearing these inside? So this would be outside clothes. There's no way my inside clothes would be cute. I don't have time to be cute inside. I'm busy. You know what I mean? Now, don't get me wrong. I do dream. My mom has this. She has some inside clothes that are really cute dresses that are really easily washable. And I do dream of getting some aesthetic wardrobe for the inside that I don't mind if they get dirty because they're easily washable. You know? But that costs money and time and I'm trying to buy a house. So like maybe I'll get that later. You know what I mean? <sighs> Anyways. The point is, is I appreciate the aesthetic and everything. But ultimately, regardless if you're a trad wife or if you're a working family, you got to play to your strengths as a unit. You got to do what's good for the family, what's good for you, your spouse, your marriage, your kids, your future. Because ultimately, that's what I don't see from these conversations. I don't see people working as a team. And we can work as a team. And what works for me isn't going to work for you. Look, what works for my marriage is not going to work for your marriage. What works for their marriage isn't going to work for your marriage. You know, cool says, do you recommend joining that bubble? I recommend joining the bubble that plays to your strength. I recommend making a bubble if that's better for your joy. Ultimately, it's up to you. You're the adult. You get to do whatever you want. You could be a 1950s trad wife. You can be a modern day OnlyFans girl. You can be a churchgoer. You can be a secularist. Guys, you can do whatever you fucking want. Just make sure it coincides with your joy. Make sure you're actually happy every day. As somebody who used to be so miserable in her life, as somebody that would cry herself to sleep, self-harm, ideations of unaliving, all of it, now at like 35, I'll be 35 in a month, you know, I get to wake up every day and just fucking high five my life, high five my choices. I'm so happy. It's like four years of joy has just been, it's every day is better. Every day is just so good. And it just never would have happened if I didn't realize like I could make my own bubble. I could choose my life. My life is a choice and I'm choosing this life. I'm choosing the life that makes me joyful every day because I'm an adult and I can. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind because I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but bled so why's my life a mess please tell me cause i'm sick of thinking yeah i'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool dun, dun, dun.